Hey guys, it's me, Kara. Thank you so much for tuning in to another video. So, the title sort of already tells you what this video is about. It's about my struggle with migraines and how I've been dealing with them, how my patterns of headaches and migraines have changed over the years since childhood and just little tips and things that I've been doing to alleviate really debilitating migraines. So. I'm not a medical doctor or anything like that. Anything I share with you today is just um, based on my experience or homemade remedies that I got from other people in certain groups, like I'm a part of mom groups and <laughs> just um, health groups. And uh, you know, I'm just talking about it because I don't think I've ever mentioned this on my channel. So my migraines go back to my childhood, probably around the age of Mm, eight nine eight nine ten okay that seems that seems to be it as far as I can remember and um, so first of all a migraine is a headache okay a lot of people say headache and then they say migraine oh you don't have a headache you have a migraine but a migraine is a type of headache and what I've learned is that there are hundreds of different types of headaches and there are different categories you can have tension type headaches, you can have migraine related headaches, and you can have cluster headaches. And um, I've dealt with quite a few. So my migraines started back um, in my childhood. I, I distinctly, distinctly remember just feeling really awful. I would get like really weird taste in my mouth and my vision got a little bit blurry just before a migraine came on. At the time, of course, I didn't know they were migraines. I just thought I had like just a typical, normal, tension type headache. You know, looking back, it's like, hmm, they were pretty bad. They were pretty bad um, because there were times when I took some children's pain medication to help relieve the pain. You know, of course, I was going to school and just to feel better, I needed to take something. So I remember taking this little pill that had a, a sweet kind of taste to it. I think it was called a children's Panadol or children's Fensic. That's back in the Caribbean. So yeah, but that is where um, all of that started. And then um, in my teens, during my teen years, I didn't get them as much, but in my last year of high school, or the last two years of high school, I remembered my headaches getting really, really bad once again and I just didn't do anything I didn't even, I just took normal like Tylenol or whatever was available that's what I took to treat that and just brush it off as you know part of my life it is what it is they didn't come about with my menstrual cycle or anything like that they just seemed to occur probably once every three months or so in high school and then there was a period of time there was a major turn of events in my life um, that I'm not going to talk about here, where it seems as though I was getting them more often. Anyway, fast forward, um, when I migrated to the United States, I noticed in my uh, first semester, because when I moved to the US, it was for school. My first semester, um, I had an onset of headaches, but what I know now that I didn't know then, it was due to the, sh the change in weather. And one of my doctors uh, suggested that I may be experiencing barometric headaches. And y'all, they're not easy to deal with. Um, but again, I just took whatever was over the counter. Anyway, um, years went by. And, um, you know, I had a headache occasionally here and there. But they weren't as bad as they were um, prior to that. But here I am making this video and talking to you guys about migraines. So what changed um, in the last year? So, you know, I was pregnant. Ebony is now two years, three months. No headaches, no nothing. Everything was fine. But this new set of headaches started happening late last year. And of course, I'm still experiencing them now. But the patterns, because I, you know, I, I jot them on my calendar and I, I try to follow what, you know, what changes took place with the onset of a headache. 
So one thing, um, the weather pattern, whenever there's this change from summer to fall, it seems as though I experience really bad migraines. And again, even now, when the weather is really warm, like, you know, Texas has a really strange weather pattern. So some days it could be like in the 90s and 80s, and then another day it could be in your 60s, 50s, 40s. So whenever there's a drastic change like that, literally overnight, I have these really debilitating headaches. And so my doctor said those are barometric headaches. Um, you guys know I've been dealing with anxiety. I need to come back and talk to you just so you know where I am with that. And with that came, there was an onset of tension type headaches. Guys, I literally feel like Velcro or a strap or a band, a tight band to the back of my head or even the front of my head. And so those were easy to address. With with my tension type headaches, I would just do a lot of acupressure treatments and I'll discuss some other things. But those were easy to address because that was, um, you know, something I can do, acupressure, like right there on the spot and that would alleviate my headache. But a migraine, uh, <laughs> they, the new thing is that now that I'm back having a regular period, because, you know, I... And if this is TMI, no apologies, apologies, it's just part of life. I started, uh, I weaned Ebony in December, so like a few weeks shy of her second birthday. And then, of course, a few weeks after that, my period came. So what I noticed, the day or two before my period comes, I have this really debilitating headache. And then immediately after it's over, like a day after... I have this really bad headache and that could have a lot to do with my hormonal imbalances or changes during that time or even um, iron de depletion so something I'm gonna look into is supplementing with iron um, vitamins or whatever like a few days or week before the onset of my period to see if that helps because that is what I read that that seems to help a lot of people but um uh, in was it January or December of 2018 I remember the worst migraine that I had ever lasted five days and it was just to this side of my head and of course with the little anxiety that I have I was thinking worst case scenario and it took a lot of effort to not let my thoughts go there thinking that I had a tumor or anything like that um, and then that subsided with a few remedies and things that I just applied and um, so, so yeah, I mean, if you've ever had a migraine, guys, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not just talking about a little, little headache. These um, migraines, they come with visual disturbances. Like, I literally would see, like, a flash of light just a little bit. Then my vision will get really blurry and probably last a while, like a few hours to a couple of days. All right, guys, I had to stop the video to go tend to Ebony. She uh, needed a diaper change. So, um... I was talking about what I experience whenever I'm having a migraine and it's nothing fun. There's the visual disturbances, a flash of light and then blurry vision and I teach and just having to look at the overhead or grade papers or even just be on my computer for a little bit to take attendance can be a challenge because the feeling or Whatever hindrance is there with your vision makes you feel like you're just, you're going to be blind. It's so bad. It's bad in my my case. Um, consequently, I have to keep the front half of my classroom dim. Uh, the kids don't mind, okay? My classroom is fairly large, so there is enough light. And then I do have a window that allows a lot of natural light. But I have to keep keep most of my room dark or dim and it's the same thing for the house now once i get outside in the sun that is like perfect for me because i feel better for whatever reason um sounds like loud sounds that really does not help the situation at all for me i do not get to the point where i'm throwing up i know some people with the really really severe migraines people who end up in the hospital or whatever they're confined to a bed for days um more power to you i 
I want to say I understand, but even though I'm not even, I haven't experienced a really bad migraine to that point, I know what a, a bad migraine can be like, even just what I experienced. So I cannot experience, I cannot imagine anything worse. Um, so more power to you. And I really do empathize with people who have this every day. I know my mom once she mentioned that at one time in her life she had a migraine every day and now it's been years since she ever had um, a migraine or even a, like a headache so um some things that help me um a lot i just wanted to mention that um i have spearmint oil but peppermint oil or spearmint oil really helps i just take a little you know put it on my thumb rub it into my my temples across my forehead by my neck and what this does for me is it helps to numb the area a little bit and helps to um cool the area and that feels so good that feels so good that works so much better than a painkiller and i know i'm saying this and i'm really amazed as to how well the essential oils work for me now i'm not saying to go put essential oils directly on your skin um i usually uh mix with a, another oil like lavender oil for example and that helps a lot uh, when you're using essential oils please be careful that is why i started did i start a video saying that i'm not a medical expert or anything if not i'm saying it now i'm not so be mindful of these home remedies but peppermint or spearmint oil with a little bit of lavender oil it works wonders i get my oils from a whole food store or i have friends who do um young living essential oil so that helps as well another home remedy um <laughs> pink himalayan salt i put just a little bit like a I, I don't know how much but a little bit of tip you can find videos on youtube with this home remedy squeezed in lemon juice and i drink that and then i dip or i sit with my foot in the bathtub with warm to hot water as much as i can tolerate it okay so my foot is in hot water and i put a cold pack behind my neck and i just sit there for a good 15 minutes to half an hour or more and that helps to relieve a really bad migraine doesn't take it all away for the most part but it makes it feel less intense and i think how this works is that the hot water opens up my vessels towards the lower extremities and the cold pack helps to close the vessels so everything is pulled down and that eases some of the um the throbbing sensation up um, by my head um the way i understand migraines the way this was explained to me by a medical professional is that your your blood vessels are kind of constricting so it's kind of like and your blood flow is not as good not like you know sometimes migraines are so bad that it can result in a stroke but for some reason the idea is that the inflammation is causing a constriction of your blood vessels and that causes a migraine um so sometimes people who have recurring really debilitating migraines they get on or they're given um, blood pressure meds because that helps to expand the blood vessels and um i mean migraines they're really no joke but i find relief with this and pink himalayan salt is just um filled with a lot of trace minerals and sometimes we do not get enough trace minerals and i think that just helps to bring your body back in, in balance. Okay, so I was interrupted one more time, but that's okay. Um, if you have a child or two or three or four in your home, you know how hard it can be to record a YouTube video, right? So the final thing I wanna mention, guys, um, is the fact that I've been taking magnesium. So I got this from Walmart, magnesium citrate. And I'm not going to give you any advice on what type of magnesium to take. Just know that magnesium by itself is a laxative. And some other magnesium like magnesium oxide and magnesium glycinate, those have very strong laxative effects. So be very mindful. 
Um, I think one of the best magnesiums you can take is magnesium threonate or threonite. I can't remember. But um, that form of magnesium crosses the blood-brain barrier and really does help with a lot of the um, neurological functions in the body. Um, I tuned into, so I started taking this one, and I still do. I interchange my magnesium. But I found this one, magnesium glycinate, and um, I really like the reviews. And I can tell you, this has been a game changer for me. Even Magnesium Calm, I know that brand is very popular. I've tried every Magnesium, but Magnesium Calm literally helps me with getting deep sleep. Um, magnesium Glycinate, this particular brand, has been a game changer for me regarding my headaches and specifically my migraine type headaches. I've never been tested for Magnesium Deficiency, but I do know that a lot of people are low in magnesium we have a lot of calcium but we're low in magnesium and magnesium has so many different functions including muscle relaxation um, neurotransmitter type functions and um, relaxing the blood vessels and just so many more and I know magnesium deserves its own video but here I am talking about migraines the most debilitating types I've ever had and I'm telling you magnesium has been a game changer for me I don't take over-the-counter medication like ibuprofen or anything like that I don't I just deal with them I rest I do the peppermint oil I put my foot in the hot water with my cold pack I do the old school everything but this one um, supplement and I'm gonna finish this up as well but this is my preferred brand um, has has really made a difference for me I take I mean, you can take, it says four a day, this one says two a day, whatever. I just take two in the morning and maybe one in the afternoon. And um, I think my magazine deserves its own video, but even as someone who body builds, um, this has really helped me with like the cramps that I would experience after a really intense workout and just helps me recover better. As far as sleep, I am not complaining about sleep. Like... I'm getting the most, how do you call that, refreshing recovery type sleep I can ever experience. And I know it's because of the magnesium. So I want to share that with you, my whole thing with migraines. I don't want you guys to think I have this perfect life. I have struggled through some stuff. Um, migraines by no means, I, I was not about it at all. They were and they can be debilitating. I all right, guys, so that is all I have. Just wanted to share my experience with migraines and how I have addressed um, those issues. Migraines are no joke, but um, these homemade remedies do come in handy. And the game changer for me was um, taking in more magnesium. Of course, if we supplement with anything, discuss with your healthcare professional. And um, I hope you got something out of the video. Sometimes I feel like uh, people see content creators as people who don't go through real life experiences and struggles. And you know I'm not about that, right? So I'm just going to share with you um, some things that I think uh, you can relate to. And also someone else might be looking at this video and may want to try something. You just never know how we are able to connect and help each other out. So until next time, peace, and I appreciate you watching. Bye.